So it would make sense that Elgato released the Elgato Stream Deck and they'd want it integrated into their software, right? Right. They've actually added a couple features that you can use with the Stream Deck in the Game Capture HD recording and streaming software that you can't do currently with normal settings in the software. It is pretty cool. We're going to flip on over to the desktop in a moment and we're going to check that out. I'm Meeples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun and today we're taking a look at how to set up the Elgato Stream Deck with the Elgato Game Capture HD software to do some advanced tricks which will be pretty great for montage makers. If you haven't seen my other tutorials or my review of the Stream Deck, check the link in the card icon above or the description down below for more. Let's check on Let's flip on over and check it out. All right, now we're going to take a look at the Stream Deck integrated with the Game Capture HD software. As I mentioned in my previous tutorial, to actually customize anything related to the Game Capture software and have it work, you need the program to be open. So we're going to go ahead and open Elgato's program. That way we can customize a couple little shortcuts here within the app and do some a couple neat things, a couple things that they don't actually give you the option to do within their software. So I've got it open here, got my PS4 turned on. It is... Not rec oh, it's not recognized because my PS4 is running through something else. Does not matter. Uh, the program itself is open. So, we've already made a folder here, which I showed you how to do in my first tutorial for the Game Capture HD software specifically. We have start recording, uh, start streaming, and then you have a few other options in this top category. So just drag them on. We can select different, different scenes in the uh, stream command view. I don't currently have that enabled, so we'll have to enable that. And I did show you how to do that in my big original Game Capture HD tutorial series. So if you haven't seen that, playlist link in the description down below, as always. You can toggle the live commentary feature. You can take a screenshot and you can do save flashback recording. But this is what is really cool and especially important for montage makers is in the normal Game Capture HD software, you can set a hotkey for a single time for flashback recording. So you can, so I have it set to Alt F10 to automatically record the last 10 minutes of the video buffer. Which is nice, but you but you only get to do that. And what drives me nuts with both this and NVIDIA Shadowplay is then if I only had a short clip that I wanted to save, I then have to dig through 10 minutes of footage to find it, which usually means that I never make any cool montages or show any highlighted clips because I don't have the patience or tenacity to hide through that. You can only do one of those. With the Stream Deck, you can set up, okay, I want one for 30 seconds. Drag another one on. Okay, I want one for 5 minutes. Drag another one on. I want it for 20 minutes. And then just give them the name. So 20 min. 30 sec. 5 min. And then pressing the individual buttons will automatically trigger the different times to record. So if you're in the middle of a stream and let's say, okay, you had a great match, then you can toggle the 20 minute recording and it will record the entire match that you just had. If you just had like a shorter match, you can toggle the 5 minute, just record that match. Or if you just got a really, really cool clip and immediately you look over, you can hit 30 seconds and only save that clip. This is huge. This is like a big deal for those who are trying to cut out specific clips and need to be able to toggle that. You can't do that with the normal Game Capture HD software. That is really cool IMO. All right, I have plugged in my PS4 to the HD 60S here into the correct capture card. I have like four capture cards running in my system at any given time, so... It's always confusing which one's hooked up to which. So now we can see the software working together here. So currently we can see that live commentary is disabled. I'm going to tap the button on my keypad. It shows that it's now enabled and it lights up on the software and you can see I'm totally clipping out here, but it is enabled in Elgato software. There we go. Now you can hear me talking. Now live commentary is enabled. For whatever reason I want to disable it, bam, shows it here and it's reflected live on the key on the physical stream deck so that you know that it's currently off. This is great that it gives you that kind of feedback, because even with an analog, just normal keypad, when you're pressing a button, you don't get that kind of, you know, that feedback, because it's not digital, you know, there's no digital screen behind the key, like my big O keypad. So this one, pretty big deal for me. Same thing if I hit the start recording button, bam, lights up to let me know that it is currently recording. And then I hit stop recording. It only just recorded an error screen, and that's fine, but it let me know. And now the buffer has begun. So then I can tell it, oh, capture that buffer. Bam, 30 seconds. It did it. Perfect. Same thing with the others. Same thing with taking a screenshot real quick. Just took a screenshot and just saved it to my desktop over here. We can pull that up. Drag it onto the correct monitor. Bam, saved a screenshot. 
all at the touch of a button. Now, with the scenes, you do need to enable a uh, stream command, which may or name may not work on my system. It's been giving me some trouble. Okay, it does work. It is working. Going to cooperate with us here. So then we go through, and it says action select a scene. We can select the different scenes. Now, unfortunately, it's just go it just goes by number. But then you can line up and choose which number you want to choose. So let's say we want that crazy nine one to be selected. We say epic scene or just epic. Now that's reflected on the keypad. So then when I want to switch scenes, bam, switch scenes. If you have something set up with that, would be a pretty sick little setup. You can switch to it. If we drag another one on there, select scene. Uh, we're going to choose number two. Gameplay. I spelled that wrong, but it doesn't matter. Press the button. Switch to scene. Has the notifications, all that jazz set up. I haven't really set up scenes in this since my most recent install. But you get the idea. And you can drag a lot of these on there and just make sure you label them properly. And, you know, drag that to the middle, maybe. Scene 5. Changes scenes. Oh, hey, you actually get a webcam view. Howdy. Fairly straightforward. Super easy to set up, but gives you a lot more control over the software than you had before. And it really starts to make it feel more like OBS Studio or something else when you have this level of control. And now we have a buffer of about 1 minute 35 seconds. So I'm going to tap the 5 minute button. And it just saved that buffer to video. So this is how the integration currently works into the Elgato Game Capture HD software. And if you're a montage maker, using it with these extra flashback recording times is huge, in my opinion. There you have it. A couple really nice features that you can't actually do within the normal Game Capture HD software, which is kind of funny. They don't, uh, th at some point, they're probably adding those, you know, the fl multiple flashback and things like that to the software. But it just gives you an extra layer of functionality that you don't have to memorize a hotkey. You just look down and press one button. Makes my life a lot easier. Hopefully, it'll make yours easier as well. If you like the video, hit the like button. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. Consider coming and following me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash I stream at least three times a week, every week. And I'll see you in the next video.